Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Hey, welcome back everyone. You're watching theCUBE. This is Silicon Angles show where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, joined with Jeff Kelly here at Amazon reInvent on the ground. Two days of live wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, executives, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, venture capital, we'll all, we're all coming on theCUBE sharing that signal with you. Our next guest is Anil Chakravarthy, Chief Product Officer at Informatica. Big announcement today, Informatica, a huge company, um, really a leader. Um, in the old school, considered old school, if you want to put that in a bucket, but also now relevant today with Amazon as you guys continue to evolve the company with customers. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, happy to be here. So we've been watching you guys for a while at Informatica, so we've always been looking, looking for the companies that are moving in with, the, with the customer trend or the ones who are buckled into their silo, right? Uh -huh. uh, where I got my market share, you know, everything's a, everything's a nail, I'm a hammer, I, I don't understand that. You guys see a future with cloud. So talk about that future and where Amazon's announcement today fits in and what is the announcement? Yeah, you know, with the cloud, we see at a high level, obviously, customers doing two kinds of things. One is they're using platform as a service, which is what they're doing with Amazon, or they're using software as a service with a number of providers like Salesforce. So, we at Informatica, our point of view is that both of these will become an extension, continue to be an extension of the enterprise. And one of the reasons for us to go all in with, uh, with uh, Amazon is to help enterprise customers do that. With the platform as a service, that is really their extended data center of the future. And their data for all the enterprise customers that we've worked with over the last 20 years will be across both their enterprise with Amazon and across the cloud and that's what we can help bring together. Okay, so I got to read this because this is a very bold move. So the press release that you guys are putting out mm -hmm. says Informatica goes all in, you mentioned that, on AWS to help enterprises move to the cloud. Data enablement portfolio makes it easy for customers to on-ramp AWS. Okay, you know, get that, that's marketing. All in with Amazon. What does that mean to you guys? Is that all in as in chips on the table, moving in from the company standpoint, or all in as a metaphor? No, all in as in embracing what Amazon is really trying to do and supporting that. So if you go to Andy Jassy's keynote You're this not morning. doing Texas Hold'em and putting the, all no, the no, company. No, we're not, we're not playing poker. Put Informatica, <laughs> are all the chips are betting on Yeah, it, I'm so. not a poker player, <laughs> exactly. Look at this face. You think this is a poker <laughs> no, face? You no, you are it's a poker a, player, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, it's not a poker player. No one becomes chief product officer without being a poker player. <laughs> but all in for us means, you know, we take a look at their strategy and say, what, especially look at what you're all in on data. Amazon. You're not all in as a company with Amazon. Exactly. We're all okay. in on Amazon. We believe that their long-term orientation, their focus on innovation and disruption, is ultimately very good for customers. We're seeing customers adopt that in a big way, and we are all in in helping customers adopt that in a big way. That's how we're all in. Yeah. The winds, the winds at their back, and you're seeing the CIA. You're seeing, I mean, the government. I mean, the fact that the government's consuming this way is pretty good indicator that enterprises will pretty much move that way as well. That's right. So, exactly. so you're looking at that consumption trend and you guys want a piece of that business. We want a piece of that business and we say, look, actually we think that that business naturally extends from what we've been doing. People want it because they want, they don't want Amazon to be a silo. But they want Amazon, the, what they're using on Amazon, mm -hmm. to be integrated with everything else they have yeah. and that's where we come in. Well, talk about what you're seeing from customers in terms of uh, moving to something like AWS. Um, are they, do you see them moving some of their traditional data warehouses and databases, things that you've helped support over the years? Are they looking at AWS for net new applications on some of the, the uh, AWS big data products like Redshift, et cetera? Uh, what does it actually look like in the field in terms of enterprises and how they're using AWS for not just big data, but just database, data management generally? Yeah, when we look at it, we see a lot of net new. Basically, things that they either could not have done economically in the past or where they have new sources of data, new types of data that they can more easily combine and, and work with on Amazon's platforms. So what, they, what we see a lot of customers doing is they're incorporating some data from other sources that they already have, mm -hmm. but the workloads and the use cases that they are following are definitely net new. 
uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what they're using Amazon for. Mm -hmm. A lot of that. Uh, can see. you give us any examples of some of your customers and some of the uh, even if you have, maybe you have to leave the names out? Some of the interesting things you're seeing them do uh, mm -hmm. on AWS. Yeah, we see. I mean, we're actually in our at Informatica World. We had a customer, joint customer that was mentioned today, mm -hmm. which is the weather company. That's a mm -hmm. common customer. The weather company is one of the big customers that's using Amazon Redshift, and they are a company that has used Informatica Cloud. They were also used Informatica's on-prem products, Informatica Power Center products. So they've been a customer for a long time, but they're using Informatica Cloud to move a lot of their data where the an analytics happens on Amazon's platform, but they're using Informatica Cloud to move the data, to transform the data, and to, to get the data at the right place so mm -hmm. that they can do the analytics. So, so let's dig into that a little bit. How is the cloud impacting Informatica and how you deliver value to your customers? Is it, is it simply taking what you've done on the on-premise world and now doing it in the cloud world, or is there a new paradigm, is there a new uh, way that Informatica is providing value to customers in the cloud specifically? We see obviously, we obviously see the cloud as a huge opportunity. Most mm -hmm. of what we see is actually net new, so it's not really displacing what we have today, mm -hmm. because it's new workloads, new use cases, combined with existing data sources. So we actually don't see customers doing a lot of say, hey, I'm, whatever I'm doing now, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, but in Amazon, mm -hmm. which would mean an actual displacement. They're handling a lot of new use cases. So it's incremental for us as well. Mm -hmm. So, but, but in terms of the, the actual workloads that Informatic is doing, I mean, I'm guessing in these new applications, you still need things like data integration, data quality, data right. governance. So in that sense, are you still doing some of those core uh, workloads that Informatica is known for, or are there, are there new things that Informatica has to do, has to adapt to, to provide value in a cloud environment? That's right, so in the cloud world, what we define our portfolio as is not only cloud data integration, so data integration we did on-premise, we continue to obviously do that really well in the cloud. We also do cloud data management, which things like data quality, master data management, data archiving, et cetera, and also cloud application integration. Mm -hmm. Now in the case of Amazon specifically, obviously a lot of what we're working with is their analytics tools, et cetera, so it's not necessarily application integration, mm -hmm. but in the case of other cloud providers, Salesforce being a prime example, mm -hmm. we're doing cloud application integration as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really, that is the combination of, of uh, services we provide in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk a little bit more about AWS specifically. So I mean, how do you, what's AWS, what is their impact that you've seen so far on the more traditional database world. I mean, you have a great view of that world because that's where you, you do your work, right? Mm -hmm, you, you're mm -hmm. helping connect databases and systems. How are you seeing them disrupt the market? Again, you mentioned it's new workloads, but is that, so it's not necessarily disrupting or, or, or replacing existing data warehouses and, and databases, but presumably, if these new workloads were taking place in AWS, would they be taking place with these more uh, traditional technologies? What's the relationship there, and, um, and how do you see that playing out long term? Yeah, again, what we see, the, the, the impact is mostly on the new use cases, new workloads, et cetera. And obviously what AWS is doing is, I think across the industry, they're just coming up with new models that's making everybody think about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, thinking doesn't immediately translate into, I'm willing to bet my career as a CIO mm -hmm. to take whatever's working today mm -hmm. and move it uh, in one shot, right? Nobody really wants to do that. But what they're really leading to is thinking about new ways of doing analytics, new ways of doing storage, uh, cost, well, cost effective for sure, but also just being able to handle workloads that they would never have done in the past. You know, basically taking, for example, web logs, streaming logs, unstructured data, combining it with structured data, being able to afford that, do it fast, do experimental work. These are the kinds of things that were really hard to do in the past. Uh, so what we see, especially in the data world, is they are really blazing a path with the offerings that they have around Kinesis, around Dynamo, around Redshift, around RDS. So they're bringing that whole portfolio of data, so data oriented services together. Yeah. And our goal is obviously to be the data layer that connects across all of them. That's what we do today. We have connectivity and integration with all of those. Mm -hmm. We also have on-prem available to run within AWS. So for customers who want to be able to reuse any licenses or buy new license, but they still want to keep the the existing deployment, but essentially run it on AWS as an infrastructure mm -hmm. layer, they can do that as well. So you're allowing them that flexibility. Exactly. So talk about the big data business. Jeff and I were talking on the intro, and I was trying to pepper Jeff on this, and he was holding his ground. But I was making the bold statement that I don't think there is a big data market. I think big data as a sector might be a bit shaky in the sense that big data is more of an embedded 
feature where there are a lot of different growth areas in other markets, say cloud for instance. So I mean, is there a big data market? Like I'm number one in big data. Like you see Cloudera, Hortonworks, and these guys, and you guys are in this market. You know, of course we're trying to be provocative in the conversation, mm -hmm. but, but can there be just a siloed or pure play big data business? Yeah, you know, we actually thought of big data, we, we tried to sift through the hype and say, what does big data mean? And we have actually defined six different types of analytics. So I won't go through and bore you with all of them. Obviously Hadoop is one of them. Yeah. We also see, for example, analytic databases like a Greenplum or a Vertica. We have in-memory, for example. We have the visualization layer. And obviously we have the cloud analytics layer with Amazon Redshift or Salesforce Wave. So big data actually is several different pieces of or types of technology. And then if you look at it from a layer perspective, where the data comes in, where it's processed, where it's accessible to the user, again, a lot of the big data companies play a different layer. So there's a lot of confusion, but if you look through the taxonomy, there are multiple kinds of analytics and there are different big data players playing at different parts of the stack. And that's what we, we think of as we think of as big data. So Jeff, what's your take on that? Do you think that people are going to be owning stacks or dancing around the stack? Because some are being very specialized in, in, their, in, their, in their pitch. What's your take? I think, look, if you think about big data, it is part of a larger um, stack, if you will, around that involves cloud as well. Uh, DevOps, and certainly it has to involve you know, operational analytics, or what we're calling inline analytics. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's an important part. It'll be interesting to see if these pure plays can establish themselves, because it's got to integrate with everything else that you're doing in your organization, That's both right. where the data is coming from, and also getting the data, the insights to different systems, whether it's your traditional data warehouse, which isn't going to go away, or what's really exciting to me are these operational systems where you're taking all the insights you've, you've gleaned from deep analytics, do it maybe in Hadoop, something like Hadoop or, or a similar system, maybe even Redshift. You've, you've, you've found some insight, you've built a model, but then actually shifting that model into an operational system That's so you're right. actually doing things in real time. So you've got to connect all these different systems. So I doubt there will be one vendor that does all of that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's companies, AWS is interesting because they are enabling a new way to bring that all together uh, in, a, in a way that abstracts it away from the customer and allows them to focus on their business, which I think is an approach that um, is going to become more and more popular. No, I think, I mean, okay, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say exactly right. That's, we, want, we obviously want to play a piece in connecting all of that. The, you are exactly right. I think we're, in the initial days of big data, you had, for example, a developer thinking, let me do everything in Hadoop. But the reality is, if you want it to be a scalable system, an operational analytical system like this, it's got to integrate and you've got to start reusing other parts of what you have. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to do everything again. And that's, we, we see that, we see that model. Play. Anil, I got to ask you about Informatica. I see you all in with an Amazon piece of the business. What's your plans going forward? What's your top areas that you guys are focusing on, where you're investing behind, where your go-to-market is strong? What are some of the things uh, yeah. priorities for you, for your business? Priority for us is we're creating what we call the intelligent data platform of the future. The idea of the intelligent data platform is can have any kind of data source, structured, unstructured, Hadoop, NoSQL, whatever it is, on-prem or in the cloud. And you can have any kind of consumption layer. It could be a business user, it could be an operational user, it could be a machine that's consuming the data, it could be any kind of consumption layer. Right now, the way it's working in the enterprise is like lots of point-to-point -point connections that's not going to scale. So we, our goal is to create an intelligent data platform layer that doesn't lock you into anything, but helps you get the right data at the right time to the right application. That's really what we're focusing on. And how about the marketing side? You guys have a nice marketing approach. Are, you, are there going to be direct sales force continuing? More partnerships? How's that all balancing? Mix it, of indirect, direct? It's a mix. It's a combination. For example, with Amazon, we're doing a lot of things with the marketplace, for example. Those are some of the new things that we are doing in terms of marketing. Traditionally, we've obviously been a very direct sales oriented company at the large enterprise, but we see the opportunity to work with a lot of partners. Everybody from the global system integrators down to the partners that we see here in this show. So this is a market Great. Well, for us. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I want you to share the, with the folks out there uh, the bumper sticker for the show. What's, what's, uh, what, what, how would you summarize this, the show here today for Amazon? What's the, what does it say in the bumper sticker? If I was going to put a bumper sticker on the car, what's it say? Well, I, I would say, a lot of people are going all in. I, that's, that's what we see, and I, I, can, I can see the proof as I come in. It's all in. I mean, Amazon certainly has the attention of developers for years, 
Now you start to see the real integration, start to see the business outcome. Again, Informatica, great testament, endorsement, certainly for Amazon, and a good business model opportunity for you guys as well. So, right. appreciate you coming on. Anil here you. inside theCUBE, Chief Product Officer of Informatica, breaking it down here at Amazon reInvent. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.